my heart just I get exposure to programming and engineering. They have to know how to do STEM. The set of skills that are going to make them more successful. Make it a, a technology first city. We want to help you guys out. Let's do this. We need to find a way to make it available for all students. The last 15 seconds of that program, we actually completed it. My heart just, I was like, ooh. I'm an important part of something. And I feel like I fit in. And you are somebody once you step in that robotics room. But just kind of blending our strengths together to create a good team is kind of like what mattered. It was kind of the core of robotics. If everybody gets a voice, then we have the best chance of having the best solution. These are attributes of, of an incoming freshman that, that college and universities are really looking for. I take all of my energy out just to succeed in here, just to succeed to be a better member of the robotic club. You can find out what your real talent is and like, and like what you really like to do. And I think it's a great idea to start planning ahead for your future. To reach out their dreams. Nobody get, nobody get frustrated because this happened or that happened. Strive for your dreams no matter what. And I'm thankful that I'm here. Our participants are you know, two, three, four times more likely to go into college. And I'm thinking I'm going to have a successful future. I know I'm going to have a successful future. It helped me decide that I wanted to be a biomedical engineer when I grew up. I think over 75% of our kids are involved in a STEM career. They become better people and I think set an example for the rest of school. I found how much I love building things and being a part of a team. And so I'm now going to go into mechanical engineering and who knows, maybe I'll build a spaceship or something. So I was really worried when our robot just completely stopped functioning at our competition. It worked really well I and mean, then it just flops. I was, I was mad at first. Everyone was really under pressure. Take a deep breath. I think first it's taught me how to deal with that pressure. We kind of came together, shared our ideas, tried out each one, eventually the robot came to work. All of that paid off because at our competition we ended up winning second place in the robot game and first place out of the entire competition. So the idea of teaming in a manufacturing uh, facility such as ours at GE is, is an exact copy of what we see in First Lego where these kids are overcoming these challenges. Um, compared to before when I was in robotics, my grades have actually increased. They went up, improved up a little. I boosted up because I know exactly what I'm doing in class. If we were able to incorporate it, in the classrooms here. You would watch science grades rise. You would watch math rise. Mm -hmm. You would watch language arts mm -hmm. rise because they need all of these things to function with the skills that they're learning. They know that in order to do this, they have to know how to do STEM. That was kind of like a great helper. Once we gave them the challenge of figuring out how to solve maybe the trajectory of a ball. Blew his mind, how am I supposed to do that? This kid went in and started talking to his math teacher. His math teacher spent a little bit of time with him and now he's paying attention in every one of his math classes. <laughs> this student now cares. Compared to other classes, First Lego League teaches me more critical thinking and how to react in real life. In class, usually it's like, raise your hand if you have an answer to the question or if you have a question on the assignment or this is what you have to do. But it's never like, oh, try a different possibility because there's a curriculum, there's steps, and you have to always follow like what the teacher says. But that's not teaching me what I need to know for my field and my career choice. 
orphans and they get to to experience things that you can't teach in a standard classroom. See, in robotics, you learn so much more because you love what you're trying to do. We are down to 30 seconds. One of our core values was that they knew that our coaches didn't have all the answers, um, but that we learned together. And so we did. We learned the programming, we learned the robot all together. They know every single core value, but their favorite one is gracious professionalism because they get an opportunity to incorporate that in their everyday life. We know it's not about winning. Like what we discover is more important than what we win. It's like um, Duval County character education schedule and it goes hand in hand with that, but it takes it to um, another level and you actually see it in the classroom. They're taking turns. They're working together as a team. They're listening to each other. But it wasn't until robotics showed me that I could be a leader, I can know what I'm doing and lead people confidently, did I actually realize that this is something that I can do every day of my life and be perfectly happy. And the way he's able to explain things, the way he's able to be a leader. That whole presentation skill, that was learned here. The skit is the way that the team explains their project mission to the judges where they say, this is the research that we did for the theme that we were given and the solution we came up with. It's the time and place for them to each have a part and for them to explain what it is that they've learned. Those presentation skills did not come from sitting in his classrooms every day. It came from the training he received through robotics. We had mentors to come in and help us, so we could have been blank slate, no nothing, and they helped us progress. And we'll ask parents, I need you to step up. It is worth my time, it is worth his time, and because he's really truly getting something out of it. Key, that's what makes your program successful. More community support and actually um, letting our children see those um, people who are in the positions that we're talking to them about. That's worth a million dollars. The kids came to us asking for our help with their mobile app project. They were really trying to help us and be our mentors, not go some people who are trying to blow us off. The kids came with detailed and well thought out ideas. I think because they saw we put so much work into this, they really wanted to give the same work back to us. It's now our turn to be mentors for the next generation. And so we're going to get them to the point where their concept is realized as a set of visual screenshots that actually run on a phone. They spend hours on it. They stayed late and worked on it for us. To bring this project to, to its full and final form, where it's actually a releasable, playable uh, mobile application with a full complement of server-side uh, code and databases and things like that behind it would easily be half a million dollars. sat down one day and started talking and we said, you know, we want to be a part of this. We want to help you guys out. Let's do this. So we, we teamed up with Renaissance Jackson and said, we're going to be a sponsor. You know, myself, I own a local company. We donate to, to these guys purely because we want to see them exceed because we can see the skills that they expand. Half these kids are going to go home and tonight they'll be dreaming about robots. And hopefully they'll be... We invested in a mobile computing lab at the University of North Florida. Our students, including the ones inside, they are incredible in what they can achieve. We go over and, and teach classes with the professors there. We give them challenges and we give them opportunities and we kind of give them the support but get out of the way. It will help the talent pool in Jacksonville in general and, and make it a, a technology first city. Defending your ideas, presenting your skills, communicating with different parties, and going through a process as a team and reaching a common goal. That's what the companies are asking for. 
It is a complete prosperity pipeline. It's a science, technology, engineering, and math ecosystem where kids get their hands on robots. Excitement and curiosity are stimulated. Their schoolwork gains focus. They develop character, social responsibility, and contribute to their community. Creativity and discovery blossom. Skills and leaders in startups flourish. Jobs and careers build into the next generation workforce, bringing progress, corporate growth, and prosperity to the entire community. We have other kids that come and ask to get in the robotics club. I mean, why should it only be for 10? I don't know a single child who wouldn't benefit. Technology is not scary. It's actually really fun and really simple. I don't ever want there to be a student who gets all the way out of school and says nobody cared about me. There's nobody on a first Lego League team that can ever feel that no one cared about them. The community gets it, they see the power of the program and the impact of the program as well as uh, the community leaders and the corporate sponsors. So really, it's, this is an amazing program here. We should stop saying robotics. We need a new label that illuminates the way these programs unlock potential. All I had to see was how the children reacted at the first competition, actively involved in their own learning process. To know this is something that as long as I'm in this position, is here to stay. We hold the key to unlock potential. We choose to use it. Everybody should have it. If you stick with it, keep up at it, keep doing it, and if you stick to it, you can do it. I think that's the most important lesson that they can get out of a program like this. So I commend the Duval County Public School System for doing this. What we can bring to light here is showing what the entire area of Northeast Florida is doing together with Renaissance Jacks and holding that up as an example that we'd love to see more of happen. Can we do that? 10,000 robots students?